Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, high-class growers, what we're going to be talking about out there is hydrogen peroxide in aquaponics. But before we jump into that, I want to thank you guys for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I absolutely appreciate you guys out there here from Aquaponics Paradise. Now, I got a question from a guy or gal, I'm not sure, named Tajesh Varun DS. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. But his, her, her question goes as follows. Can we add hydrogen peroxide in aquaponics for pest control and plants growing up? And how? So we're going to touch on this, high class growers. Um, and while we get into this, I'm going to present some information and I'm going to show you how I come to this conclusion. I haven't personally used hydrogen peroxide in aquaponics and I don't know anyone who has used it effectively. I've heard of people that have used it, but effectively. And I haven't seen any research that has been done on it uh, as well. But we do have areas of hydroponics and recirculating aquaculture that have used this. And there's particular instances where it's used and it's effectively used. So we're going to be breaking that down right there and then coming back full circle to coming back to this question here on can it be used for pest control. Right. So let's go ahead and break it down and find out how they're used in each one of the fields because we know that aquaponics is a combination of hydroponics and recirculating aquaculture. So the first thing that we should know before we jump in there is that the hydrogen peroxide that you should be using, if you're going to be using it at all, should only be a pure hydrogen peroxide, a food grade hydrogen peroxide, right? And there's only one of those that is FDA approved approved to be used on you know for food right and that's a brand called perox aid and you can get that from a company called western chemicals inc or from another company called uh i believe it's called eka chemicals inc as well right and they sell it there and this hydrogen peroxide has a 35 percent active ingredient hydrogen peroxide and that's opposed to what you're going to find at you know like walmart or something like that that's going to be a 3% active ingredient hydrogen peroxide, right? That's used for to, to treat cuts on humans and stuff like that. That's not what you're going to want to be using in your system and in your water, right? You're not going to want to be using that in there. So I want to get that straight first. Now, when we're dealing with hydroponics, when you go into that realm, what hydrogen peroxide is used for is used for, you know, to treat root disease, Right. As a disinfectant and he treats root, uh, root disease, especially uh, things like root rot, which runs rampant in hydroponics, especially as the water temperatures begin to increase, you know, above 70, 72 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is somewhere around 22 degrees Celsius, 22, 23 degrees Celsius. That's when root rot definitely starts to run rampant. So people will add hydrogen peroxide in there to kind of, you know, keep that under control. Also, I've uh, seen it used for algae control in, uh, in hydroponics as well. And that's pretty much the extent where it's used effectively, right? You got other people that will use it and add it in certain things, but effectively used is uh, used to treat, you know, those, those type of um, areas. When you go over to recirculating aquaculture, it's used for a number of things as well. In particular, it's used for, you know, treating certain diseases. There's a disease called saproleg um, neasis, and that's something that affects the eggs of freshwater fish, right? It leaves like, a, like white spots on the, um, on the eggs, and it can cause a lot of mortalities, right, when that thing occurs. So it's used in that, and it's FDA approved to, 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 to treat that type of disease. I want to make that clear, too, that this is, there's only a few things that it's FDA approved to, to treat. That's one of them. Another one is um, certain type of gill disease and salmonids, right? Gill disease that can cause deaths and also a disease called columnaris in cool water fish and in certain um, other fish like channel catfish, right? It's FDA approved to, to be used to treat those type of disease. So that's pretty much the extent to where it is used effectively. 
right? So when we're talking about using hydrogen peroxide, that's pretty much the extent, right, to where it is. You're asking if it should be used for, you know, for uh, as a pesticide. That's not something that has been really tested. Now, if you want to use it for um, to treat disease or for the root problems, then that's something that you can consider. Now, one thing that you also have to keep in mind is when you're adding hydrogen peroxide to a recirculating system, particularly when you have a biological filter that's involved uh, in that particular system, then there's some things that you have to be aware of. There's a study or article written by um, um, North American Journal of Aquaculture, and it's an article titled Low Dose uh, Hydrogen Peroxide in, um, what it was called, Low Dose Hydrogen Peroxide Application in Recirculating Aquaculture Systems. And what they did is they broke down some studies in there, they ran some experimentations, or they're reporting some experimentations that were ran on hydrogen peroxide added to a recirculating system, right? And they had um, systems that were set up with low fish stocking densities, somewhere around 24 kilograms per cubic meter. That's a little bit less than about a one fourth pound per gallon, one fourth pound of fish weight per gallon of water. And then they had another system set up, which was ran on a high stocking density, somewhere around 92 kilograms per cubic meter, um, which is around a little bit, a little bit. Uh, more than three-fourths pound of fish weight per gallon of water, right? And so they added hydrogen peroxide in here to see what the effect would be on a recirculating system because hydrogen peroxide, it is a good disinfectant, right? And it's very environmentally friendly. So this is something that, you know, scientists would definitely love to incorporate in dealing with some of these disease that occur in certain fish, right? And if they can add it in there, it would definitely cut down on a lot of the impact that it has in the environment and also in the water column. Because once it breaks down in the water, it doesn't leave any toxic, you know, compounds in there. Right. It's relatively safe. So when they were running these experiments, what they found was when you add the hydrogen peroxide in the low, you know, the low fish stocking density tank and the high uh, fish stocking density tank, it has two different effects and it primarily affects the biological filter. And that low fish stocking density system, what it does is it impedes the biological filter. It causes it to crash at a certain uh, concentration of hydrogen peroxide. And this is very important, right? When they put it in there, they notice that the nitrite oxidizing bacteria begin to collapse, right? And you guys, you guys should be familiar with the um, nitrite oxidizing bacteria. You guys should be familiar with the nitrification process so if you're not just it's nitrite or the nitrite oxidizing bacteria are the ones that pretty much convert the nitrite into the nitrate. Right. And the nitrate is what we're really looking for to be um, present in your system. That's what provides your your um, your nitrogen source for your plants. But anyways, that nitrite oxidizing bacteria, it begins to crash and then it has a spike in nitrite because there's none of the bacteria there to convert it. Right. So this becomes a big problem. But what they notice, though, when you add it to the higher um, uh, fish stocking density and feeding uh, system or tank, that it doesn't have an effect on it. Right. So this is important if you're trying to add it in there to know. And that's because when you add hydrogen peroxide in, in the system, what it does is it breaks down more or it breaks down faster when it's in the presence of a higher amount of organic material or higher organic uh, matter. So when you're feeding more, more of that fecal matter is present in the system. So it allows that to break down more opposed to when you had the lower fish stocking density and the lower feeding rate, it didn't break down as much. So that hydrogen peroxide came in contact with that, with those uh, nitrifying bacteria and it particularly infected the nitrite oxidizing bacteria, right? So that's important, very, very important. At the end of the study, what they concluded is if they want to use that hydrogen peroxide in one of these systems, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take one of the options that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the biological filter offline, right? You're going to want to bypass that. So it doesn't interact with that, with those, um, with that, uh, microbial community. 
and then crash your biological filter. So these are things that are that, you know, the little nooks and crannies that need to be known before you start introducing these type of things in your system, right? Your hydrogen peroxide and things of that nature, right? It's very important to be aware of this, right? So overall, like I said, you could use hydrogen peroxide, but it's for, it's probably going to be limited as of now, what could be effectively used for, you know, as far as you're dealing with your plants, your root rot, um, and then as far as your fish, certain, certain bacteria and disease that the fish run into. But it's not going to be something that's going to be particularly effective for foliar spray, which means just basically spraying on the plant leaves. If you're trying to treat, disease, uh, you're trying to treat pests, things like aphids and thrips and, you know, white flies and stuff like that, it's not going to be particularly effective. Although you might find some people who use it and say they get results. There's no studies where I can come and say this has been used and it's used continuously. You know, it's used, uh, it's verifiably effective for treating pests, you know, in aquaponics and things of that nature. I can't come to you and say that because I haven't seen that, you know, I haven't seen those, that research and those results and I haven't used it personally. Right. So that's just something that I want to throw out there to you. So you maybe you can look into it uh, further. You might, you can try it and um, see what you, you know, what occurs for you. But I'm, you know, from what I've seen, it's gonna be, you know, pretty much limited to what I've uh, mentioned, you know, and, and as far as that. If you were to get results from that, that's why it's important to have real scientific documentation or a real scientific experiment, because sometimes when you're adding extra stuff in there, which I see a lot of people add, they'll add hydrogen peroxide and mix it with other things, you never know what it is that's causing the, you know, the, the aphids to get to run away or to, to, to not be present any longer. It could be a mixture of things that are causing it. That's why you need a controlled environment really to run these type of experiments to see if it's that the hydrogen peroxide is actually what is causing the pest, you know, to be uh, or, or to act on the pest. Right. So we got to keep this, these things like this in mind. Right. So hopefully that has given you some insight. Go and check out that article that I've mentioned and look in there and see what they have been using it for. Go and look into the, uh, the hydroponic world and see what they have been using hydro, uh, hydrogen peroxide for. And then you can get a clear understanding and, you know, see what it has been used for effectively in the past. Right. So hopefully this has helped you out and anyone else out there that has been looking into using hydrogen peroxide. I personally would just stick to the pesticides that are used. If you're going to use pesticides that are formulated for those particular pests that you want to aim for, right? They have active ingredients in there that are known to target those particular pests. And you won't really find hydrogen peroxide in those, in those active ingredients, right? So just, that's something just to think about. So hopefully this, this has helped you out. Anyone else out there that has other questions, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. I absolutely love you guys' questions and love what you guys contribute to the channel. Once again, I want to thank you guys for liking the video and subscri uh, subscribing to the channel. You guys are wonderful out there. If you guys need other help, make sure to visit the theschoolofaquaponics.com. Get into uh, Aquaponics Paradise. You're going to absolutely love the material in there and learn the fundamentals of aquaponics. So with that being said, until next time, this is Brooklyn. St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>